When it comes to assessing a family's indoor living environment, the Environmental Protection Agency identified five indoor air quality categories of concern that all homeowners need to be educated about in their home. They are referred to as the five danger levels of indoor air quality. Indoor air quality is a major human health issue in the United States and Canada. Did you know that people spend 90% of their time indoors? This is actually growing due to many societal impacts. Did you know that there are 750,000 new asthma cases per year in the U.S. alone? Homes are also built tighter and far more energy efficient than they used to be. Fresh, clean air in homes is now harder to get. Let's take a few minutes to dissect these five danger levels and explain exactly what we're dealing with in our homes. Carbon monoxide, at low levels, causes mild health effects that are often mistaken for the flu. These symptoms include headaches, dizziness, disorientation, nausea, and fatigue. High doses of carbon monoxide can be fatal. Danger level 4 contaminants are microbial growth. These are microorganisms, mold, and fungal spores. You will always have naturally occurring mold. It's everywhere. But when mold is in abundance in areas it shouldn't be, it can reach toxic levels and become a health hazard. Most elevated levels of mold are due to two things, inadequate ventilation in unfinished areas of the home and moisture intrusion. Mold and mildew are musty smelling fungi, which grow in air that is moist and stagnant. Allergies are aggravated by mold spores. The number one allergen is the fecal matter of dust mites, which live off moisture from the air. Mild molds can cause sinus and respiratory infection, while severe molds can have catastrophic health consequences, including infertility. Danger level three are allergens and particulates. Dust, pet dander, pollen, insect debris, and smoke are microscopic organisms that may live and float around naturally in your home. They typically travel through your air ducts and upward through the home following the stack effect. Dust mites were mentioned when we discussed moisture. Keeping your house dry can make it hard for them to live. Filtering and cleaning your indoor air is very important too if these allergens and particulates are present in abundance. Symptoms of high levels of allergens and particulates could be nose and throat irritation, congestion, sneezing, coughing, and asthma flare-ups. Have you ever said I'm going outside for a breath of fresh air? Danger level two contaminants are infectious illness in the form of colds, flu, bacteria, germs, and viruses. They are airborne illnesses or microorganisms. These germs, viruses, and bacteria are naturally carried in by animals and family members from the outside. Once in the house, they go airborne and get sucked into the air distribution system and circulated around the home. I'm sure you can relate to the transferring of illness by sick people present in the same home, office, school, or mass transit vehicle. Danger level one contaminants are toxic compounds. Building materials, furniture, carpets, paints, and cleaning chemicals can produce a toxic environment in your home that may cause an allergic reaction. Homes are being constructed and re-insulated to be tighter and more energy efficient, which may trap these toxic chemicals in our home. It's no wonder childhood asthma has increased 600% in the last 30 years. These are indoor toxins, as I just mentioned, and also exterior pollutants. These are pesticides, herbicides, and even natural gases like methane. These gases can migrate into a house from the soil.